I promised you guys a happy dance because that's what we did at the start of the um, the iPhone event one. There we go, that is courtesy of the guys over at Metronome. So, love that so much. Uh, voice out of sync, uh, there's not going to be a lot I can do about that, I'm afraid. I will do my best. But, um, thank you for joining me today. Uh, yeah, we've got a few bits of Apple news to go through. Um, we've also got a couple of items to unbox. So, hopefully, this is kind of cool for you guys. It, this is completely new to me. We did do a test stream last night. Uh, I was using the IMAX um, built-in FaceTime camera. The quality did not look good, so I have uh, kind of upgraded it a little bit. We're now streaming from my iPhone XS, uh, which is the one that's also being replaced in a couple of weeks once the um, the 12 Pro Max arrives. But uh, we're using OBS. That's what we're using to stream all of this. Apologies if there's any background noise. There's not a lot I can do. I live in the boiler room of the house when I'm doing these streams and when I'm doing my videos. Normally, I'm able to cut bits out, but... Uh, let's get into the news. We are going to take questions as well from the chat. So I can see I've got um, a fair number of you guys there in the chat at the moment, which is lovely. Verna, Vice, Rich P. Uh, we've had Jashwanathrapjanthanana, who was one of the first guys in our um, notification squad. And great to see you guys here. So first bit of news that we've got is Apple has um, started shipping new iPhone disassembly tools to their Apple stores and their approved uh, retailers, their approved repair shops, because the iPhone's 12 display is going to be quite difficult to remove. If you've seen the uh, design of the new iPhone 12, they have got quite uh, a different um, design to them, so the screen is pretty much flush with the uh, stainless steel or the aluminium, so it's going to be very difficult. You can't get a spudger in there to uh, pull them apart. So this new piece of kit that they've got is essentially like a big pair of scissors that's got a couple of suction cups on it and it heats the iPhone for two minutes before it tries to open them. That's to help soften the glue. Um, it's also the new iPhones have got much better water resistance than they've had in the past. So that could uh, be one of the contributing factors to why we've got a little bit more tough glue there to remove. So, uh, these things are being shipped out to all of Apple's repair shops at the moment. Now, the guys at iFixit have said um, that they're a little bit annoyed because obviously Apple uh, isn't going to be selling these, as far as we're aware, to the general public. Um, so, it makes it difficult for people to repair their own iPhones. But I'm sure they will end up in the ecosystem somehow once that happens. Uh, once, once the iPhones are out there... I mean, hopefully not too many people are going to need to replace the display on the first day uh, or within the first couple of weeks, but, you know, accidents will happen. So, that's our first one. Do let me know your thoughts on all of these stories in the chat. We are going to talk through all of your stuff. We're going to probably do maybe 30 minutes, 35 minutes on today's live stream. Um, so, the next, uh, the next piece that we've got is Apple's Express Retail expands with counter service pop-ups. So because of obviously the situation that we've had with COVID-19 this year, there have been a lot of difficulties for Apple in the retail space, although they've done far, far better than most brick and mortar retailers because they've obviously got the online side of the business as well. And so many people are starting to work from home um, but the reason that I started this channel is because I was furloughed from my real job. I'm now back at my real job, uh, at least 50% of my hours at the moment. But my job is in the uh, food and drink sector, so uh, I sell rum and stuff to pubs. Um, so it makes it very difficult. It's one of those things that we don't know when it's going to recover fully, which is why this is kind of my diversification um, a little bit. I've always had a passion for Apple stuff as well, so it makes sense. But yes, um, Apple is doing these express retail counters now that uh, you can go up and essentially buy it just over the counter rather than the kind of more interactive store experience that we've had in the past, which I think we all prefer. But right now, just being able to get to an Apple store and do an express pickup or buying an iPhone or a MagSafe connector or something like that over the counter is an advantage that we need to have access to. Um, 
next story we have is the AirTags thing. Now, I have even done a graphic for this because uh, that's what I'm like. Cool. Boom. There we go. It's just as if we're doing a real normal show. Um, cool. So AirTags, there have been some patents that have come out uh, which show, and I will read these from my notes here. Um, patent filings show multiple uses for AirTags in addition to the already assumed finding uh, lost things functionality, which is what we were expecting. Um, patents show that uh, they could be more robust and shock resistant and water resistant, as well as entering a lost mode when not near a predetermined set of devices. So, for example, um, your home pods in your house, if your device, whatever that device may be, isn't near to other devices of yours, so for example, your iPhone could have a detection when it's not near your Apple Watch or something in your home. So uh, it gives you those kind of options. Um, it starts to ping other Apple devices that are around it, whether they are uh, in the local environment, if they are other people's iPhones, other people's Macs, using the Find My function that we were told about, uh, I believe it was last year, at the keynotes. So it's able to use all of those other other Apple devices in order to locate itself, send anonymous data through to Apple itself and be able to um, to kind of locate it and uh, ping it back to you. Quite interesting. I think that's sort of what we were assuming it would be able to do. Um, the interesting stuff, though, is where we get into... Um, the patent shows multiple air tags on a person's body. So um, in different parts, upper arm, lower arm, hands head so you could actually use them for motion tracking now whether this is sort of to the level that would be used for movie production or whether it's more kind of for a fitness thing um is yet to be seen and it might well be that this is just something that they've registered for future use but i think it's quite interesting yes verna um that is something that i am definitely coming to with this because if you're going to have multiple air tags on your person if you're going to have either a suit or armbands or whatever that you can wear um, to track your motion surely the individual prices can't be that high um, there's a couple of other things that I noticed within the patents as well um, number one that it looks like they are showing a MagSafe type puck or an Apple Watch puck um, that you can use to recharge them now there have been conflicting rumors about whether they're going to be wirelessly charged or if they're going to be using uh, like LR44 watch batteries within them if they're looking to be as water resistant as possible it looks very much like they would be uh, wirelessly recharged because that makes it much easier to seal the whole things um so yeah there is the information that i have on the new air tags um i think that's uh, that's kind of covering all of the news stuff that we have down today i've got a couple of iCave answers questions here to answer but first of all uh ruda patel in the chat can't wait for apple silicon max who else is excited for uh, november 17th i am very excited for it um the apple silicon max is probably the thing that i've been most excited about throughout the year and actually when i was in the apple store the other day um the guys there were saying that a couple of them have actually got the developer transition kits um using the mac mini with apple silicon inside using the old uh, ipad pro chips the a14z processors not that old but you know not designed specifically for Macs, and they're saying that the performance is really, really nice. Although they're not designed to be particularly fast machines, they're designed for testing. Um, they are very, very capable. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm very excited for that. And one of our questions here, um, actually from Tato, uh, thoughts on getting older Macs, MacBook Air 2020, if you only use stock apps from Apple and don't need too much performance or should you wait? Now, I personally think that waiting is definitely the right thing to do, especially as we know that that event is coming next month. Even if after the event you decide, no, the Apple, um, the Intel Mac is all I need, that's absolutely fine. But I think it would be a mistake to buy a brand new uh, Mac at this point with an Intel chip because let's be honest, the Apple Silicon is most likely going to be either cheaper or much faster or have more battery or quite probably all three. Um, so why would you buy an Intel powered Mac at this point when you know that that's on the way and that this is the chances 
the, the chances are that they are going to be much faster, much better value. Um, and even if you don't need the additional speed, because the, the Macs don't slow down over time, the only thing is that the software sometimes becomes a lot more demanding of the Macs. So the actual physical hardware is not going to slow down, apart from in terms of thermals, if it's caked up with dust, but that's fixable. But it's much better idea to have the headroom so that the the hardware that you've got is more... Um, more durable it's going to have more longevity to it so i would definitely say hold on and at least see what the performance looks like on these apple silicon Macs, so that you've got all the information before making the decision does that make sense hopefully so cool let's see what else we've got in the chat i have got one more iCave answers question here which we will come to in a moment that's from the val nerd so um verna vice uh would be interesting um, how the AirTags charged. Yep, absolutely, that was the one that I've already read. Any comments on Apple Silicon YouTube guy? Yes, we've just done a bit of that. We will probably talk about more Apple Silicon stuff. Uh, if you guys have got any specific questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Apple Silicon is honestly one of my favourite things to talk about in the world. Uh, Rich P, agree as pricing can change? Yeah, um, definitely. So, even if you don't want to buy the Apple Silicon after they're released, uh, you will probably find that the pricing drops on the Intel Max um, quite substantially once uh, once the Apple Silicon's out because more people are going to want to go over to those. So anything that is kind of used or refurbished will probably come way down in price because people are definitely going to want the Apple Silicon, I think. Um, it's going to be a long-term thing. It's going to be a change that they uh, move over to completely. There have been a few people asking me as well uh, when I expect to see a refresh for 16-inch Intel MacBook Pros. Don't think you will see any more Intel Macs after the first Apple Silicon stuff actually comes out. When Tim was saying at WWDC that we have more um, Intel-based uh, Intel based Macs in the works, I think he was talking about the iMac refresh that we've already had with the 10th generation Intel processors. I don't think we're going to see any more refreshes with Intel processors because it just won't make sense once people have seen what Apple Silicon can do. Um, now, I was hoping that today we would be unboxing my iPad Air, which is released today. That's not going to be arriving until about 12.30, 1.30 this afternoon, so I'm afraid we're not going to see that in the live stream. have got a couple of things here, though, um, to unbox. So, as I say, I did go to the Apple Store. So we have got the brand new MagSafe charger. I don't know if you can actually see that in there. I think it's a little bit too bright, maybe. But this is here. Oh, Verna Vice. Any info about the MagSafe issue with charging of older iPhones? No, but let's find out, shall we? So, this is the packaging. You've got a little bit of paperwork in there still. Let's pull this out. This is the least elegant unboxing you will see in your lives. Uh, don't need the paper. Oh, more paperwork. Do we get an Apple sticker? Nope. That's very disappointing. Um, I don't know if uh, you guys have noticed, but the new iPhones are coming with one Apple sticker, um, but the new iPad Airs are coming with two Apple stickers. Uh, the other difference is that the iPad Airs come with a charger and the I iPhones don't. So I'm assuming now that if you get a charge brick, you will probably get one Apple sticker with it. Um, presumably you used to get one for the iPhone and one for the sticker. That's all I can assume. So let's have a look in here what have we got so designed by apple in california opens up little trifold and there we go we've got the usb c uh, little charger and the actual aluminium puck it's a really nice design it does look elegant apple does such a good job of just packaging up like a wire and and making it a nice thing to open so here we go Obviously, this is really for when my iPhone 12 Pro Max comes, which we obviously still need to uh, order. But there we go. It's a very nice. It does look nice. It's got a little chamfer on the inside edge of that aluminium uh, ring, which is really, really nice. I'm not sure if the iPhone will... Yeah, we can just about see that. So it has got actually a really nice kind of chamfered edge. Reminds me of the iPhone 5s when they first came out. They were so shiny um, around the uh, around the rim. However, they don't age super well. Because here is my iPhone 5. And I don't know how well this will... You can see the aluminium is absolutely ruined around the edges. 
But then, that said, this is like, what, a six, seven-year-old phone now? Uh, and it has had use uh, up until about 2017. So, uh, and it still works. It still turns on. All good. Hasn't been backed up for several weeks, but there we go. Still works. Um, so, yeah, this thing, we're going to plug in. The only USB charger I've got, though, is this uh, anchor, which I think is about 15 watts. So it might not charge at the full pace anyway. But let's give her a, a go. Oh, I can't charge that one. Um, I have got an iPhone 8 here, though, which should work. It's my work phone. So it does come up as charging at least. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, this is fully charged already, so I'm not really testing how well it charges it, but it, it works with the older ones. Um, it doesn't really stick to the back. There is obviously some magnetism there because I can lift it, uh, but yeah, it doesn't stick for long. Don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it kind of... Yeah, it's definitely registering as charging, but it's not... Uh, I, I can't really charge... Uh, check the charging rates i will do that with my iphone uh, 10s at some point in the near future um but i like that for one thing and we've got one other thing to unbox which is this bad boy so i've never had an apple pencil before this is the apple pencil 2 ready for the ipad pop those under there right little pull tab Apple does such a great job of making these boxes easy to get into. Everyone else should be kind of struggling somehow. Um, again, we've got designed by Apple in California. Beautiful paperwork. Oh. Mm, I'm going to be honest, I don't care. And pull this little fella out. So you still get a little wrap around it. That's nice. Didn't necessarily expect that. Very nice. Looking forward to playing around with this and using Scribble and things like that. I haven't had an iPad that is compatible with the uh, pencils before. So, very much looking forward to this. Ooh, it feels satisfying to do that with. Cool. That is that. So, let's pop those away for now. Uh, we've got one more question in the main topics for the day. So, iCave answers. Oh, let's... Uh... Come on, I'm such a pro at this. Um, let's get the right graphics on the screen, shall we? Boom. IK okay, answers. Uh, Tato, uh, iPad Air unboxing, unfortunately, will not be on this stream because it is not arriving just yet. Um, it's going to be arriving this afternoon. I've had the confirmation come through. I think it's going to be between like 12.30 and 1.30. So I will try and get a video up probably this evening because um, I will certainly film unboxing it. Right. Uh, so the other IK answers that I've got, the Val Nerd, uh, this Val Kitchen, um, I had an eye doctor's appointment a few days ago and he said because I use a 10.2 inch iPad and the screen makes it hard to look at and eye strain increases and it's worse uh, that I already have eye problems so he told me and my mum. So basically uh, he was asking about some external displays um, to potentially use with this I think is the, the best thing that we could uh, suggest. Um, external display you can use an HDMI connector into the USB um, sorry, the uh, the lightning port at the bottom, um, and display your iPad stuff on an external display. So any videos that you're watching, anything like that. The other thing that might be worth having a look at is um, the eye strain reducing glasses, which uh, have the kind of yellow lens tint to them. I think that might be something that might help with eye strain. Um, I am not a doctor, however. Um, but yeah, I think the... The thing is, the screens are such high resolution and they're so pixel dense that it, it's it's no different, to be honest, to looking at paper other than that you've got the light coming out of it. So reduce the brightness down on the screen so that you're not um, over overdoing your eyes. I mean, I'm one to talk. I've got a bunch of lights pointing at me at the moment so that hey, you guys can see me okay. But uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all I can suggest, really. Um, I know there were some great... Uh, sorry... Um, I know there were some great uh, answers in the chat yesterday in the video. Um, so there was some great stuff from Clyde, who actually used to work uh, on Apple Sport. Really, really helpful. He's great in our comments section. Um, I've subscribed to Notification Squad, Rantham Jadav. Thank you very much, Rantham Jadav. Uh, uh, Rantham Yadav. Yadav? 
let me know if I've got that right. Um, I'm terrible at these. I will give you a shout out in the next video so that you've got one that kind of lasts for posterity as well. Um, now, a couple of things that I wanted to just cover. Um, a few people have asked me about this thing. Uh, this is the Power Mac G4 Cube. It's one of the most beautiful Macs I think that Apple has ever um, released. And uh, some people are asking if it works well. Yeah, it does. And you can turn it on using the keyboard. There's a nice little power button on the old uh, on the old ones here. So we'll just let that boot up. It's quite nice. Um, <laughs> can use this display for both of my Macs that I keep on the desk anyway. So yeah, that does work. Have we got any more uh, questions from the chat? Has anyone got any questions in general about stuff going on? Or what would you like to know about? Uh, Apple Silicon? We've got t -t dings going on. Sorry, that's Twitter. Let me just silence this. Mm -mm -mm. Or at least reduce it down. But yeah, all working beautifully. Let me take out that iCave answers. So, yes, Apple Silicon. Yes, discuss. Right, what... Uh, do people actually want to see in November? What does everyone think? Let me know in the chat right now what you expect us to see at the first Apple Silicon event uh, coming up this November. The 17th is the assumed date. That is when everyone expects it to be coming. Um, also, let me know if I've just ruined all the sound by turning down the uh, audio on my Mac. <laughs> but I hopefully haven't. Um, for me, uh, I think... Some of the first videos that I did that actually did quite well were about Apple Silicon. So uh, the first one that we were expecting to see, I'm still not sure what the uh, situation is going to be on this, was to be getting the Apple Silicon uh, MacBook. The 12-inch MacBook, I think, is still very likely to happen. I think the 12-inch MacBook, though, is likely to come with the A14 rather than the A14X. That's what I expect. Um, so that will be the same processor as in the iPad Air, the same processor as in the iPhones. By the way, the iPhones clocking in slightly lower on the A14s than the iPad Air is. I'm not sure if that's a thermal thing or a power management thing. We did mention it yesterday on the show. But once you put it into a bigger frame like uh, a MacBook, I think that's going to do quite well as well. Um, next up... A lot of a lot of rumours have been around a 13-inch MacBook Pro coming. I don't know why they would do that one over either a MacBook or a MacBook Air. Now the MacBook Air, it looks very much like the the cooling capacity of it, according to Linus Tech Tips, is about 16 watts, which is what you would expect from an A14X chip with 12 cores. Uh, the A14 is an 8-core, I believe, and the A14X is expected to be a 12-core processor. So that looks very much uh, like it would do quite well. Right, we've got a couple of questions coming in up here. So, uh, Mac Mini would be great for me as a developer of a device. Yeah, absolutely. I think Mac Mini is pretty much a shoe in As I say, when we looked through the, uh, the database entries... Let me see if I can grab that up now, actually, because I don't need all of this here. Um... Yeah, new Mac product identifiers. Uh, must be one of these. Yeah, basically the Mac product identifiers that came out look very much like uh, we've got the Apple Silicon, um, the Apple Silicon uh, developers transition kit was listed in the new products that will run Big Sur. Um, so I think that just means Mac Mini in that form factor is going to stay around and it is going to have Apple Silicon quite soon. Um, I expect that they will probably put an A14X if they're doing that chassis because that has got active cooling built into it. That makes all the sense in the world. Um, performance expectations, Tato uh, is asking, I think we're probably going to be looking at about 40% faster for anything with an A14X chip. That tends to be the performance bump between the uh, the A14 and the A14X if you base it on the A12 to A12X and the A11 to A11X. All of the previous 
uh, ones have been around about a 40% bump. Uh, that's according to the research that was done by Luke Miani, who, if you haven't watched his channel, you definitely need to have a look at. So 40% uh, faster than an A14 chip puts it in the territory of like an i9 um, MacBook Pro. So the top of the line MacBook Pro, but it will also not have the issues with thermal management that the current MacBook Pro has because that is all coming from those uh, Intel chips. So expect basically as good as the Intel um, MacBook Pro 16 can do at its best all the time and with much longer battery life and without overheating. That is exactly where I think it will be if they're basing it on the A14X, but they will most likely be going more than that as well. Uh, right, let's have a quick look uh, at the chat here. Yeah, Mac Mini, great for a developer. Yes, 100%. Cheaper Mac Mini, I do think, Paul, that we will be getting cheaper Mac Minis. Um, if I think it would be very easy for them to get it down to the $500 mark. I think it would be fantastic marketing wise if they went in at like 300 um, but I think they might go in at $500 to begin with and then maybe we'll get it as like a Mac Mini SE uh, that comes in at the lower price maybe with the A14 chip in it um, I would still think that is a really really good value because the A14 version um, the A14 that's in the iPhone and the iPad Air is about equivalent to a mid-tier 13 inch MacBook Pro at the moment um, in terms of performance. Right, let's have a look. Uh, really hoping for a new iMac. Yes, 100%. Um, they will be coming. It looks very much like 24 inch and 30 inch will probably be the new sizes. I don't expect them to be in the first generation. I think it would be great if they were, but I don't think they will be. Um, the first generation, when they do the redesigned iMac, that will hopefully also have Face ID built in, which would be fantastic. I did a video probably two months ago now, could be longer than that even, about what I would love to see in an iMac with Apple Silicon. And I do think that Face ID would work great because iMacs are used a lot in education. And if you could put an iMac in education that uses Face ID to identify which student is using it and load their preferences, their files, it would make it super secure. Um, at the moment, for people that are having to do exams remotely your iMac would be able to identify that the right person is taking the exam which I think will be really really good um, so yes I would love to see them I think we're gonna struggle to see them by the end of the year we might see the first one um, we might see a 24 inch because the 21 and a half inch iMac was not updated really this year when the iMac's uh, 27 inch version got the 10th generation Intel processors they basically got nothing so um performance expectations we've hit uh rich p it will be uh it be smoother for you think um with their own chips over intel yes i do think sorry you've, you've corrected it in the next one yes i do think it will be a smoother transition than uh what was going on there was a video that i watched yesterday someone suggested in the chat for me and i think it was uh, a channel called wolf or something along those lines um i'll try and find a link and put it into the sh uh, into the link in the show notes um Essentially, Apple's business right now, like the their own Apple Silicon stuff, is already the vast, vast, vast majority of what they do. Um, so I have no doubt that behind the scenes they have been running macOS on Apple Silicon chips, on A-series chips, for a long time. Um, when Apple moved from Power Max, uh, from Power PC through to Intel, they've been running macOS for five years on Intel before they uh, announce the transition. Uh, this time, I think um, I think they've been doing it for quite a while. They've been... Originally, when the iPhone was announced, they said it's a phone that runs Mac OS. And by that, they mean it runs the same Unix core. It runs a uh, very similar programming language. A lot of the frameworks are shared, or at least... Um, very closely related. Werner might actually be able to give us more information on this because he is a developer. Um, but I think a lot of the frameworks are either shared or very easily translatable between the two. Uh, last year or the year before, they announced Catalyst, which is um, basically if you use the Twitter app on a Mac, that is the iOS version, but ported through 
with a few changes to the APIs that it uses and the way that it renders so that it's easier to use with a mouse and you can resize the screen and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yes, I think it is going to be a pretty smooth transition. They've already announced that Final Cut will be their day one. They've already announced that Microsoft's Office Suite will be their day one. Adobe Suite will be their day one. The Creative Cloud um, Illustrator was just announced for iPad the other day because obviously they're now sharing a lot of these things. So hopefully when Photoshop comes to Apple Silicon, it will be the full version that we would expect from the desktop and that will then spill over to the iPad version because at the minute the Photoshop for iPad kind of sucks. Um, I am excited to see how it runs on the Apple uh, on the iPad Air though later today. Cool. How many Macs do I think will be released at the November event? Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be more than people think. Purely because I thought before they were going to put Apple Silicon at the end of the uh, iPhone event. The main reason I thought they would do that is because Apple Silicon is such a huge announcement for Apple that I thought they're going to want to get as many eyes on this as they can. And the general public right now doesn't really care about Macs in the way that they care about iPhones and iPads. And that is exactly what we were saying before, that Intel is such a small piece of Apple's business right now, that um, the stuff they do with Apple Silicon, as it is in the A-series chips already, is just a huge, huge part of it. I don't think the public is going to care when they announce Apple Silicon. What they are going to care about is when the price of Macs come down. Um, so I think we will see that. And I think they will probably try and go for some redesign stuff just to make it differentiated. Um, I would, as I've said in the past, love to see the MacBook come in multiple colours like the iPhone. I think that would be really cool. Uh, and I mean not just like uh, space grey, silver and rose gold or gold. Uh, I think it would be great to see them in the brighter colours that we get in the iPhone 12 line, for example. Um Oh, but how many Macs? Uh, sorry, completely ignored your actual question and just went off on one about Apple Silicon. Right, I think we are likely to see two or at a push three Macs. Um, but it will be three form factors if they do that. I think it will be two to three form factors. I don't think you're going to get options for here's the MacBook and you can have it with this processor, this processor or this processor. It's going to be like an iPad. This is the 2020 MacBook with Apple Silicon. And this is the processor in it. Uh, you might have storage options. I don't think you will even get options on different levels of RAM, probably. Although the early stuff was saying that we would, I actually think that they will build it into the system on a chip. It won't be uh, different versions with different amounts of RAM. That's my thought, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I think two to maybe three max. If it's one, I'm going to be a bit sad because they're doing a whole event for just one Mac. Um, but I also do think that we will see iPad Pros at this event because Apple Silicon and iPad Pro just goes hand in hand. Uh, and the iPad Air that I've got on the way today pretty much beats the iPad Pro in most of the performance stuff at the moment. Um, even some of the benchmarks that have come out this week have shown that it's even closer on multi-core than we thought. It's about 250 points off rather than about 500 points off. So... I think uh, performance-wise, the iPad Pro needs a bump, so it will probably go to A14X uh, with 5G support as well, because 5G, 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 5G! We get to say 5G more times in an event. It will be great. Um, <laughs> so, Verna Weiss, we're back to you, my friend. Um, do you really think that uh, Max will use A14? Uh, I guess they will at least call it different, perhaps based on A14. I don't know. I think they will probably say it's the power of A14 in a Mac and this is what we call it now. That might well be all they do um, for the base level ones. But we will see the, what they call it. I don't care. I don't really care. Um, all we know is that it will be the technology of A14 in whatever package they decide to put it in for a Mac. And it will probably get a different name because they won't need to have necessarily all the same technologies built into it. So the image signal processor can be probably toned down a lot if it's only going to have like a FaceTime camera built in. Um, the, uh, the touch layer support doesn't really need to be there in the same way. The, there's a lot of stuff that they can either switch off in firmware or that they can do what they need to do with but it may well just be an A14 by another name. Uh, do I think Apple is developing its own discrete GPU? Bill Branset. 
Brandsetter. Bill Brandsetter? Did I get that right? Uh, yes, I think they are. I absolutely think they are. Uh, there's been a lot of people going, uh, oh, what, what about, you know, using an AMD GPU with Apple Silicon? I don't think they will. I think everything that you get from now on is going to just say Apple on it. Um, we don't we don't hear about an AMD GPU going into an iPad Pro, and they beat most stuff on graphics. So I don't see the need for it. Um, now, I'm not a developer, and I'm not a hardware guy, but if you've got a great GPU and you can put it into an iPhone or an iPad uh, with no active cooling and, and get really great performance out of it, why can't you put like eight of them on a card that goes into an uh, into a Mac Pro, cool it actively, and get a load of performance? I, I don't know why that would be difficult. Um, and if they're producing these chips at scale anyway and they're not having to pay the license... Um, add-ons that they would have to pay for something like an Intel chip and the premiums that they would be doing because they're producing their own cost wise it should be fairly cost efficient as well that would be my guess um, I hope they will have a Pacific Blue Mac yeah me too um, I tell you what the biggest disappointment for me in the world was when they released the trash can Mac I love the finish on that thing and I wanted an iMac with that kind of shiny black finish on the chin I thought that would have been awesome but yeah just give me IMAX, give me an iMac Pro in Pacific Blue. I will be well happy. Um, thanks for answering my question. You're very welcome, Hynix Pro. Uh, I actually mentioned your name that time. Uh, Paul Zanstra, release date for Big Sur. Um, thank you for joining the notification squad. By the way, you got your shout out on yesterday's show. Release date for Big Sur, almost certainly going to be at the Apple event at uh, mid November. Um, I can't imagine that they're just going to go, oh, here it is, before then. They want to show it off. They want to show off all the new software that will go with it. They'll want to show off um, Final Cut in detail running on Apple Silicon. They'll probably want to show off uh, Logic Pro running in real time on Apple Silicon and show that it on a MacBook with an A14 and it can basically run all of those uh, run all of those channels like the Mac Pro with 28 cores of Intel can do. Um, you can do it just in your pocket now. Um, so yeah, I would I would 100% assume that it will come out at that event or possibly the following day just to upset the developers. Tanshizuku, Tanshizuku. Hopefully I've got that right. I'm guessing you're one of my um, watchers from Japan. Uh, which apparently this is like tea time in Japan when you just got home from work. Lovely. Uh, would we have any choice after Apple Silicon comes out? For example, could I choose between Apple Silicon chip and Intel chip for a MacBook? Yes, you can choose by buying an old one. Uh, but I do not think that they will uh, continue to sell Intel ones. Or I don't think they will sell them alongside each other. Uh, I think once a product line switches from Intel to Apple Silicon, it will be Apple Silicon. I also don't think you will want um, an Intel one once you see what Apple Silicon can do. I think Intel is in so much trouble, it's untrue. I think this time next year we might be seeing Intel being bought out by someone. Um, one thing actually uh, that's worth mentioning, I believe Apple bought out Intel's uh, modem business, which means that they will soon be able to put 5G into their stuff, um, I assume, without having to pay the extortionate costs that Qualcomm were charging for the 5G modems, which is the reason that uh, the iPhones kind of went up this year, but kind of didn't, but they just made them a bit smaller. But then the, like the 12 is $100 more than the 11 was, but there's now a mini that comes in at the same price as the 11. So, yeah, I think that that will be much better. Oh, your race is Japanese, but you're from Singapore. Okay, cool. I, was, I guessed pretty well. Um, cool, good to know. Hi, f hello Singapore. Um, Tato, the NPU with 16 cores for AI is also going to be impressive on the A14. Yes, it absolutely is. Um, I am not big enough into that stuff, into the uh, machine learning stuff, to know what that will mean, but it will be good. <laughs> That's all I need to know, is that it will be a very good thing. Uh, guys, I'm going to wrap this up in the next five minutes. So if you've got any more questions, uh, I'm going to finish this stream at 11.45 my time, which is 12.45 UTC. Um, so if you've got any more questions, get them in, in the chat right now. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining uh, for this live stream. If you like the style, let me know because I would like to do some more of this stuff. But maybe we'll do like a once a month Q&A uh, iCave answers live kind of thing 
if that's something that you'd like. Um, this, the reason I'm doing this as my first live stream is to celebrate the fact that uh, we've now passed a thousand um, subscribers, and thank you so much. I think we've grown in quite an organic kind of um, safe way because I basically hit the 4,000 watch hours about four days before the 1,000 subscribers, uh, which is the other thing that you need to have for um, uh, for monetization and to unlock kind of those extra features. Um, we also hit 100,000 views on the channel uh, yesterday, I think it was, uh, or overnight, so that was really cool. Um, Tato, I have used Bootcamp. Uh, I don't currently use Bootcamp uh, because I don't, care about windows uh, to be completely honest um what i have done though is i've dual booted my imac into linux uh, so that i can use most of the stuff from steam that i actually cared about uh without having to worry about messing about with windows i found bootcamp has been an absolute pain when i have used it uh i assume on november 2021 you'll have a mil million subscribers i mean i'm more than happy to have a million subscribers please feel free to share this channel around and get nearly a million of your friends to join i will be very very happy if we do um i think uh i think beginning of january uh social blade thinks that we'll have about two and a half thousand which is nice you know in a a couple of months to be over double what we're on now but to be completely honest my uh my aim isn't to grow the channel and to be super fast i don't want to do any of the kind of spammy stuff i just want people to find value in what we're doing and hopefully I can help to explain some stuff. I don't know everything. Uh, I will tell you when I'm not sure about stuff, like I've just said about the machine learning. Um, that sounds like a good thing. Even Steve Jobs stood on stage and uh, was was talking about one of the features and went, and that sounds like a thing that you would want, because he did not know what it meant at all. It was really cool. It was one of the Power Macs that they were introducing at the time, and the engineers had obviously given him some, some bump to read, and he went, and that sounds great. <laughs> uh, Gabriel Bradley, hello uh, I think we were chatting last night on the other stream Hynix Pro, let's see but you're growing well and the content is nice, well thank you very much the only reason that I will keep an eye on are we still growing is to make sure that people are watching something that they want to watch uh, if we stop growing then I will assume that I'm not doing the right things and we will try and fix it but we, yes we did good stuff, good stuff Right, we are going to start to wrap this up now. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to join my notification squad and you haven't already, then please um, subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, you will get notified whenever we go live and do anything else like this. The other thing I would love is if any of you want to join my Instagram or Twitter. Both are at Living on iPad. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit more on Instagram, I think, some stories during the day and things that I'm out and about doing because I'm not always sitting at the desk. Um, so... If you want to do either of those things, let me know in the comments that you've done that. That would be amazing. Um, and it's great because I, I do genuinely enjoy chatting with you guys down in the comments. I don't think I generally miss any comments. I pretty much reply to everything anyone says. And I think that's one of the important things that's helped us to grow. Hynix Pro, you've already subscribed. Thank you very much. Um, have you hit the notification bell? Because I don't believe we've given you a shout out in the things. If you have, I will definitely do that in the next show. Um, nothing else coming up in the chat that people want us to answer about Apple Silicon, so I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, it would have been awful if I was doing a live stream all on my own with nobody to talk to. So, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we will put this... Tan Shizuku, thank you so much for following on Instagram. Um, yeah, we're going to wrap it up, uh, and thank you all so much. We've actually grown all the way through this stream. We haven't really sort of peaked and people have left because I was boring. So that's a good thing. Cool. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will see you on the next show. The next scheduled show will be Monday at 12 UTC. But there will be some stuff over the weekend.